probably very minimal because there uh, are many other ways in which these provisions could be temporarily extended. Uh, there's different kinds of uh, band-aids, legal band-aids that could be put on. This measure itself is a stopgap measure, uh, temp uh, interim measure, and interim measures can be used to, to bridge it, whether they be military orders or cabinet decisions. So the, the notion that uh, you know the prisons are going to be emptied and uh, the government's not going to collect its taxes, uh, I think uh, are really um, sky is falling alarmism, because when the consequences are so grave, uh, you know solutions will be found to uh, to prevent them. And we've seen this before with uh, with uh, earlier in the government when the opposition didn't want to support a um, very important immigration bill. Uh, you know, and there were all sorts of horror stories about what would happen, and the country would be flooded uh, with, with uh, immigrants from uh, hostile countries. But in fact, uh, the relevant ministries issued interim orders uh, until legislation was actually passed. So the you know the consequences, the real consequences of, uh, of the of this bill, uh, are the destabilization of the government, which is exactly the intended effect by by the opposition. Uh, and that's probably going to be the most long-lasting consequence. And yeah, ironically, we, ironi ironically, of course, if the government falls, and that seems a distinct possibility at the moment, uh, within the next couple of weeks, then these um, Judea and Samaria regulations will automatically continue into the term of the next government. Yeah, and that's the most likely solution. I mean, that's the most likely, I think, uh, situation at this point, is that they'll be extended because the government will fall. So let's go on to another issue with your permission. Uh, Norway last week decided that products from Judea and Samaria, East Jerusalem and the Golan Heights will no longer be labelled as made in Israel, but will clearly state accurately where they were produced. Um, what's the problem with this? Uh, the problem is it's completely discriminatory uh, against uh, Israel. Um, you know, it does not reflect uh, you know, underlying realities. Uh, it seeks to put a Jewish star, effect, effectively a yellow star, on um, Israeli products uh, and um, treat them in ways completely different from, from any other kind of product um, because there's no territory which they require to have this kind of labeling. There's occupied territories around the world, but only in the case of Israel do they insist on special labeling. Uh, you know, Western Sahara is an issue that's uh, of significant public interest in, in um, Norway, uh, but they don't require products from, from there to be labeled made in Western Sahara as opposed to made in Morocco, as in fact they are. So they're singling out Israel. Uh, they're violating international trade law by discriminating against Israeli products um, and really showing Israel that the concessions it's made in the peace process not only don't get taken, don't get appreciated, right, but of course Norway is home of Oslo, where the Oslo Accords w were birthed. Um, but then, you know, Israel is punished uh, for the Palestinians not going, uh, not going along with the, uh, not going along with the process. Is there a real concern that more countries, particularly European states, will follow this example? I mean, Euro the European uh, Union has already been urging countries to do this. Uh, it already has a policy of urging countries to do this. Um, Many of those countries have, you know, shown a significant political unwillingness to go along. Uh, so, so there, there is a concern, but it's unlikely to be a tidal wave. It's important to point out that this is exactly the kind of thing that, you know, countries like the United Arab Emirates don't require. So these northern European countries, you know, are basically alone in this kind of requirement, and they're alone in applying it only to Israel, right? In the sense that Israel is the only country in the world facing these kind of discriminatory measures, which shows it's not about international law. It's really about, uh, you know, putting a, a yellow star on products from the Jewish state. And how should Israel respond, in your opinion? Um, I think Israel needs to, you know, reevaluate the, the nature of its diplomatic ties uh, with, uh, with countries that do this, Norway. And, for example, I think a, a not crazy measure would be to, you know, in, this is a, really a trade measure, an international trade measure. And in international trade, when, you know, you are aggrieved, self-help is basically retaliation. Is, is the primary uh, way of dealing with this. And I think it would be completely proper to put labels on Norwegian products saying, you know, product of a country that discriminates against Israel. Finally, what about the argument that um, a, a consumer in uh, Oslo shopping in the market who prefers, for whatever reason, not to buy West Bank products has a right to know where the products come from? So consumers have all sorts of preferences, which are not, you know, which are, which is not the job of country of origin labeling to to reveal. Right? A consumer might want to care if a product comes from Tibet, 
but Chinese products don't have to say that. Um, you know, a consumer might care if uh, something comes from Western Sahara, but uh, products from there don't have to uh, don't have to say that. That is to say, that argument um, you know only demonstrates how unusual this treatment of uh, Israel.